Alright, so uh, in Nebraska, mile marker 20 right there, exit 20. Three pounds of boots, 780 T's. Crew set on 63. I'm getting 20 some miles to the gallon. And if you look in the rear view mirror right there, there is a Parkland landmark. Big old heavy thing, big one too, 39 foot. Weighs about 20,000 pounds, empty. There they go, there it goes. Yep, so yeah. So, that's it, that's what we're doing today. All right, so Steven. Yeah. How are you gonna wire this one up here? Because, um, you know, coming along this, this side rail right here, it's, it's a solid bar right here underneath, so. I mean, how, how, how do you run it? So what I do is off of the original wiring harnesses, I split the sides from driver to passenger. I try to keep the same resistance on both sides, so I have to feed clearance lights and license plate lights back here. On this side, I'm gonna feed this clearance light, and I'm also gonna come up and pick those two clearance lights up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take four arm lengths, this wire and then take that cut that and then once I wire this into the OEM harness I'll run it up through the middle of the bed along the chassis either the passenger frame rail or the driver frame rail and then I have a hole cut inside that tube which you can't see but up underneath the chassis on the bottom side of the bed I have a an opening that I can run through this tube rail and come out here and then connect it and then pull it tight so everything's flush up against the side. So instead of just running wire along this frame rail right here on the outside where it could get damaged or whatnot, or what most people do, you actually take the time and fish the wire through the tubing of this bed so it's protected and everything Absolutely. and um, doesn't get damaged. Yeah, the best way yeah. for the best way to have longevity in your wiring system is to have as limited uh, exposure to the outside elements as possible. Right. So if I can hide it through a tube rail, um, that's what I'm going to do. It does take more time, but in the long run, it doesn't come back for me to fix it later. And guys, that's why these guys are doing work on my truck and my trailer. Attention to detail that other shops don't normally do, but this shop does, so I like these guys. They'll do my stuff while I'm in town here. There you go, 18.2 average, I'm 20 miles per hour. I'm doing 60 down the highway. That's those locking hubs right there. Extra um, five miles to the gallon fuel efficiency because we're no longer spinning that front end that front differential all the time like normally it's doing but yeah normally i would get about 12 13 tops but mostly about 12 yeah hey, i'm getting over 18 average and look at that current miles per hour and i'm on a flat well slightly downhill but still Today is oil changing day. Got the shapers out. I'm looking to see. It's still draining down there. It was getting there. Anyhow, today is open box day. Got fuel filters. Try a fleet guard this time. Here we are. We're gonna open a box. Let's see what we got in the open box. And. Today's box, yep, lodge, cast iron enamel, three quart. You know what that means, right? Damn, skip it, we're cooking spaghetti. So, yeah. Uh, there we go. Got my pot. Open this up. Oh. 
I got my fancy enamel little thing to set it on. My little protective ears. Cooking spaghetti. This time try something different. Beef patties. A much better uh, ground beef. Mix that up. That's our beef for the spaghetti. And I'm going to use a little bit of avocado oil. So we've got the skillet, vegetables cut, got the seasoning, got another fancy little enamel um, cast iron thing to put the skillet on, got a bunch of little fancy utils. Let me get back to changing all. I gotta try to reach up there and get that filter because I'm in a pit this time. All right, see you guys later. We're done here eating and I'm um, actually we got a second unboxing except um, they come in a box it's out of the box coolant we're talking about coolant and hot shot the one thing about hot shot is um, you uh, you really rack up the miles quick and uh, you also you know a lot of more wear and tear on your truck than your neighbor down the street that might have a similar truck and um, you're supposed to I think it's on here somewhere it's good um, they want you to replace it might be in the owner's manual but it's good for basically 100,000 miles There you go. Um, where this one says guaranteed protection for one million miles of um, but anyways now nah, I think the the um, steel though they recommend replacing it once a year and that's because um, we work our trucks hard heat and cool and heat and cool and heat and cool and so and um, I had just recently replaced mine. And with that EGR cooler filling, I had to, um, after I fix it, I had to uh, mix in coolant that was um, all vehicles, all purpose. Because um, if you look in the owner's manual, uh, coolant now, there, there's different technologies. And um, mine is right there, organic acid technology, oat, is what I look for. And, um, you can also, well, like I said, the owner's manual. You can also sometimes find it written on your overflow reservoir. I'll show you on mine. Walk over here. And it's right there. Oat. But there's also a thing called Hoat or hybrid organic and there actually is a difference uh, and, and there's a reason for that as well it's also phosphate free, nitrate free free and it's all because of the um, the engine the high aluminum content but anyways um, you should replace your coolant once a year just because the way we work the work our trucks just um, anyhow after I had the EGR failure I um, had to replace four gallons, I think it was. It takes five and some gallons. Anyhow, five point something. So um, I replaced four gallons with a generic all purpose. And one of the things I noticed right away is temperatures running a little bit you know, warmer than normal. 
so I'm going, I'm going to replace it all again with with um, final charge is what I use. Um, you can use other ones, name brands. You want to stick with name brand. Peak. This is a Peak product, as you can tell. But um, so, anyways, I just recently changed. Then I had the failure. Then I had to add some generic stuff, which is I reckon it's okay. It may be okay for a normal daily driver, but for us. It's not okay. It's you really want to keep all one technology. Uh, you don't want to mix oat and hoat. Um, you can for a short duration, but you, you're gonna to want to flush your system out again, and then put all one technology back in there, one manufacturer. And I like Final Charge because you can get it all of the all the truck stops. So I'm doing that today. But also, I want to talk about Pro Tip 101. And this is this tip is brought to you by Bob. He is a hot shotter with Landstar. And it's also not, in addition to changing your antifreeze once a year, uh, you want to change out your thermostat. And I actually change, I do mine twice a year. Um, I do 180 in the summer, 190 in the winter. And basically it's, well, I just, that's the way I do it. I, I start cooling it off fat quicker and keep the levels down, hopefully a little bit lower, pulling those heavy heels out west, out the cabbage and grapevine and stuff. Uh, if you have the higher degree thermostat in there, you're already operating at a higher temperature. And then, you know, in a blink of an eye, you can jump up, um, jump up over and, you know, get it real hot and shut down on the side. And, but if you lower that operating temperature a little bit, you may have a little bit more time to react to let to get out to get your foot out of the pedal and lower those EGTs and not have it jump up to two, 240 degrees or plus. But um, right here, now this is a genuine Millpar part. This is what it calls for for the six sevens, and um, it says right there 190 degrees. The big thing is, it goes with the seal, comes with the seal. But also, see that 58 millimeter? But also, look how heavy duty this is. Look at that construction. I mean, that's, that's really meant to take a lot of abuse that we put our motors through every day on a daily basis. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get up temperature and pass operating temperature hauling every single day as, like I said, your neighbor down the street, you probably will never see um, 200 degrees, you know, um, for a month or so, just going back and forth to work down the road. Here goes 180 degree right here. As you see, it doesn't come with a seal. That's because it's a 54 millimeter and it's made for the 12 valve heads, which is a different type of filler neck from the going to the radiator now this is a gates part part number and I put it in the description but this is uh, actually Napa and O'Reilly has another one by Murray but it's the same it's the same motor rad but if you compare these even the the smaller 180 Look at that. Look how much heavier duty the Cummins are. And these right here are actually made in Israel. The box says um, made in Israel. But now you're wondering, well, do you use these right here? No, I don't. I don't use those. I, use, I stick with Cummins genuine parts. And this actually, here is the elusive unicorn. If you want to do this, this is the one you want. That's the Cummins part number. And as you can see, only made in the USA. Part number, but also 58 millimeter. 
180. Made in USA. Heavy, heavy duty Cummins design. But this is the unicorn. It's hard to find. There you go. Because it's designed for the five nines with the common rail 24 valve heads. There you go, 180. See if you can see it there. Yeah, there you go, 180 degrees. But yeah. So I'm sticking that boy, bad boy in. I'm getting rid of the um, generic mix final charge that I have that's been raising the temperatures a little bit, I, I do believe. Not 100% sure, but however, um, like I said, you don't want to run a long time with, mix with the mix technologies. You want to stick with the technology for your vehicle. And that has a lot to do with the composition of the metals in your motor with the the newer newer trucks having a lot more higher aluminum content inside you know requires a different type of um, coolant compound so it doesn't etch that aluminum and start wearing down on it but yeah and the unicorn i'm going to install her i didn't get to do it last time because actually this is the only one that was in stock east of the mississippi and there's only two in stock west of the Mississippi. And somebody's going to actually, um, Bob, the um, inspiration for this pro tip is going to go out there and get those two. And of course the pro tip is when you change your antifreeze once a year, make sure you change your thermostat with the antifreeze. And if you want to do an extra step, you can put a, run 180 during the summer months and go back to the 190 during the winter months. But anyhow, that's it guys. See you guys later when you get to work. Uh, another thing you may want to do also is um, get a bug screen for your grill. Spray off the bugs, especially this time of year. Or if you don't have a bug screen as of yet, definitely um, spray off your grills, radiator fronts, transmission cooler fronts. You know, don't let the bugs build up. So yeah. And also, you know, get yourself a uh, little screen protector there to help with that.